Here's a fact, 95.2% of all the websites in the world are built using JavaScript. It's literally everywhere. And if you want to get hired as a web developer, you must become a freak at it. So in this video, I'm gonna show you a five-step system to actually help you master JavaScript. This system is called the divide and conquer method. It's the same system that I literally used to learn JavaScript and get hired as a full stack developer and the same system that I have perfected over the years and I used to train hundreds of my students with. I'll explain with a nice story. So sit down, grab some popcorn, grab a bottle of wine and get ready. By the way, before we start real quick, if you wanna become a future-proof programmer, I'm launching a free 28-day coding challenge. It's gonna be called the Coding Games. It's completely free. There are a ton of courses. You'll get access to a community where you can network with people and there will be also some crazy prizes, including a MacBook Air M2. Not this one, because this is mine, but I'm gonna get one for you and you can choose the color. So if you wanna join, it will be hosted in my free community and you'll find it in the second link of the description. Again, it's completely free. Second link in the description, so go join right now. Go join. Join right now. Saturday at 2 p.m. I have arranged an ATV trip in the forest here in Thailand. And the last time when I actually been on ATV was in Dubai. And I remember shitting my pants because we were always riding those cliffs and whatnot made from sand. And I was always feeling like I'm about to flip and then the ATV, ATV would actually smash me, right? So it wasn't a pleasant experience. That was the first time when I rode an ATV. And right now, when I'm about to go on the ATV, I'm thinking about all these moments when I was about to turn, I was about to look like a loser. I was afraid to stay in the back of the queue because I would be the guy who would slow down everyone. I, I wanted to be cool, right? I want to be cool. I want to not be a lame dude, you know? That's what's going through my mind as I'm uh, getting ready for this trip. As I'm driving there and whatnot, I arrive and uh, I'm meeting all these people that uh, are about to go with us uh, to, the, to this trip in the forest. And I remember I'm choosing my helmet and I'm trying to find one that, you know, fits me in one way because I have a very long head and I look like a weird Romanian Mario with a helmet on, so I don't really, like how I look with a helmet and taking those, taking this all out of the way, we are getting on the ATV. The guy is explaining us how to brake, how to uh, use the throttle and whatnot. And we are off to the races. This time was different actually. I had that weird experience in Dubai, riding the sand dunes. Now being in the forest in my natural Romanian element, I was feeling a bit more relaxed. I was still shitting my, myself, I'm not gonna lie. Something that really prompted me to make this video about mastery was when uh, the actual Sherpa, I don't know if it's a Sherpa or not, but that's how I'm gonna call him. The ATV Sherpa took my phone and he was riding the most dangerous cliffs, looking back at me with one hand on the steering wheel and one hand holding my phone to film me. And I'm like, Jesus, this motherfucker actually mastered this thing. And I started thinking about how he could actually master the ATV because there are so many things. You have the terrain, you have the throttle, you have the weight of the ATV, you have the brakes. This guy actually became one with that thing. There was no separation between the ATV and himself. He became the ATV and he mastered that toy, that machine. And it was uh, very eye-opening for me to see someone that is so graceful on a machine that is so rough, if that makes sense, in a wild environment. In this video, I'm gonna help you to master JavaScript, to actually make sense of it and get paid at the end of the day. Mastery, now more than ever, it's probably the most important thing that you should focus on because everyone and their dog is trying to learn programming to get in because let's be honest, programming is probably one of the most powerful skills that you can learn in this day and age because if you didn't realize, computers are everywhere and you need to learn how to speak with the computers, not just to get a job, but maybe at some point, you'll find a problem. You'll start your own business. Knowing programming is gonna save you so much money, so much time, and probably not only save you money, but it's gonna make you a shit ton of money. So what is mastery? It's good to start with a definition because if we do not have an end goal, if we do not know what a particular thing is, we'll never be able 
to reach it. In my opinion, mastery is the complete domination of a skill done in a completely relaxed state. It's basically when you can turn off your brain, your active brain that has to think, and you can do something without even being conscious about it. And you do it so well, people will think you are not a human being. Whatever you do looks effortless, but people understand that it took you years to master. If you wanna become a master at something, you need time. There is no way around this. There is no shortcut around this. If you wanna get good at something, you need to spend a lot of time doing it. Think about the ATV guy. He's probably doing this job for the past maybe five, 10 years. He's been on that ATV every single day, twice a day. Probably he was riding that ATV outside of the job because he really liked it. If you wanna become a master at JavaScript, a master at programming, a master at your craft, you need to have a lot of time under your belt. Quick story from my mentorship program. One of my students, Ed, uh, you, you are probably familiar with him because we had a few podcasts in the past together. He actually had an interview two weeks ago, one week ago, and uh, he failed it. And he wasn't upset that he failed it. And he wasn't upset at all, actually. He was actually happy because it showed to him something very important. The fact that he stopped coding for roughly two months and he thought that he understood all the concepts and whatnot, he became very slow. He thought, that if he got a skill, he can actually stop practicing it and he's gonna be good to go. And I told him, bro, it doesn't work like that. And then he realized how it actually works. One of the things that I don't like about coding bootcamps, people get to a certain level after those three months or six months or whatnot, and then they completely stop coding. What do they do? They go into the job market, they are looking for six months, nine months, 12 months. And in the meantime, their skills are decaying. And then if they manage to get an interview, they'll be so slow, so rusty that they will fail the only opportunity they manage to get. A professional developer works a full-time job. And then while the professional developer works a full-time job, he's also interviewing. So his skills are always sharp and you have to think about it in the same way. Okay, I designed my entire program, my entire mentorship program around this idea. You have nine months to go through the material and then you reach the team project where you should code every single day until you get a job. Imagine if I would spend zero time trying to think about how to improve my YouTube videos, trying to explain a concept. I do this shit every day. It never stops. There is no point where you're like, okay, I'm done with front end. No, mastery is forever until you die. The second concept that I want to talk about is called side quests. So I started doing Muay Thai. We are splitting the session into two parts. The first part is all about deliberate practice. Deliberate practice means practicing a specific skill in particular. For example, kicking or uh, punching or doing uppercuts or using my elbows, right? To hit the pads and whatnot. So we are practicing every single skill we are tweaking every single movement my coach is telling me where to put my feet how to twist my hips so i can hit the thing properly and then we have uh, free practice where we are doing sparring and whatnot obviously not hard because i'm a beginner when it comes to coding the way you have to do it is to find things that you are not good at for example i saw this in my program i saw this in other programs i saw this on LinkedIn, people have troubles with writing a for loop. If you do not believe me, go and write on for loop and see how well you can write it. You can write a for loop in so many ways, start to end, end to start, start to middle, middle to end, uh, middle to start, middle to end, uh, start to a quarter, a quarter to start, uh, quarter past, you understand? So you have to practice that for loop over and over and over and over and over again until you understand what each piece of that loop is supposed to be doing. Same with variables. That's why in my program I have, again, you can access this program by clicking the second link in the description. You'll see that I have an exercise where you have to write variables 20 times. If you go to any other program, they will show you, hey, this is a variable, this is another variable. Nice, let's go to the next module. I don't do it like that. 
I have a thing called cardio, okay, where you actually have to repeat the same thing over and over and over and over and over and over again until you really get it. I do that for HTML and CSS, I do that for JavaScript. With React, I don't do that specifically because by that time you should have the skills to not have to do that, if that makes sense. You need to have a point where you do deliberate practice and this should be mainly focused on new concepts and concepts that you are not 100% confident in. So if you see yourself sucking at algorithms, take three days and learn everything you can about algorithms. Watch YouTube videos, read articles and whatnot, and then put them into practice to really understand it. Because you'll not get better by putting the mess under the rug. It's not gonna work like that. You have to figure out, okay, I suck at this. And you have to use discipline to fix that. This is very important. People think that discipline is only doing the hard thing when you don't want to do it. Okay, that's fine. That's the first level of discipline. But the second layer of discipline is to realize that you suck at something and to actively try to improve it. For example, I realized that I suck at speaking. So every single day, I read a chapter from a book out loud because I want to become a better speaker. I have a coach that helps me to speak better. If you go back to three months ago, you'll see that my speech was totally different. The, I knew that I had this problem for a long time, but I never did anything about it. But I said, you know what? Fuck it. I have to practice what I preach. You can only learn by playing. You have deliberate practice, but really understanding something comes through playing. You have to mess around. You have to play around. You have to break things breaking things and seeing the errors and trying to understand the errors and not being so worried. Now, the next concept that I want to talk about is called expanding the gap. So there are three main circles when it comes to your knowledge in programming and your knowledge in anything. The, the smallest circle like this is what you know that you know. The next circle is what you know you don't know, okay? And the biggest circle is what you don't know you don't know. You cannot know everything. But with mastery, with time, with deliberate practice, with free practice, with intentionality, you can expand the gap between what you know, you know, what you know, you don't know, okay? And you can only grow this circle. The more you learn, right, the more you realize how much you don't know. Noobs, beginners in programming and noobs in general in any kind of skill, they think they know everything. For until maybe six months ago, I didn't know how to write a function, like from memory, that would get me a random number between zero and 10. I always had to Google the same thing, how to get a random number between zero and 10 in JavaScript. And I was copying the code, I was dumping it in there. Very simple thing. I never cared to remember it, but I made it a goal, a personal goal, to never have to Google that thing again. So now I increased that circle of I know what I know, and I removed a piece from the circle that was I know what I don't know. So every single time I'm trying to increase those circles. The next thing, if you wanna master something, is to get into something called flow state. If you are doing something that doesn't challenge you, you will become extremely bored and you lose passion for it. That's why, for example, you hate your current job because you are doing the same thing every single day. And people love being challenged. People love learning new things. Even though you might not like sucking at things, the reality of things is that you actually love being challenged. It's part of your DNA. If things are too complicated, like for example, learning embedded systems, like someone was talking about on my channel, well, <laughs> it's gonna be so tough that you won't be able to make any kind of progress after days of research. Where do you even start with that? The way I structured my mentorship program and the free course that you can access by clicking the second link in the description is by keeping you in flow state where things are just a little bit more challenging than your current level. If I keep you at that level every single time, you'll be challenged enough. And then when you crack the code, you'll get a dopamine spike, you'll get addicted to coding, and you'll wanna chase more spikes of dopamine, okay? And you get addicted to coding. And the next point that I wanna talk about when it comes to mastery is full relaxation. When I was uh, learning how to code, uh, when I was a barista, I was always wondering if I should join a bootcamp, but I didn't really like the idea of going somewhere for three months. And because I'm a very slow learner, I need time to understand how everything works. I felt like I'm gonna fail that thing, right? 
and a bunch of people that are going to coding boot camps have this problem where they are under attack every single day they have to learn how to code and code for 8 10 12 hours a day your mind and my mind everyone's mind doesn't work under stress you cannot learn anything when you are stressed imagine if i put a gun to your head and make you learn spanish and have like some casual conversation in 12 hours you won't make it because you'll shit your pants that's why you have to be fully relaxed when you're learning something that's why you need a longer period of time that's why i made my program nine months and then after that you have the team project where you can spend as much time as you want to achieve mastery in this so you can actually apply for mid-level jobs or senior level jobs if you want to learn html css and javascript for free join my uh, community it's the second link in the description and we'll run a challenge where you can win an m2 macbook air you can choose your own color and you'll have a month of mentorship in my program my paid community and there will be a shit ton of prizes but we are aiming to get in 1000 people there will be prizes for people who are the most active the people who build the best projects the people who brought in the most people right the people who refer this group it's gonna be absolutely insane and it doesn't matter what level you are right now uh, you can be a complete beginner or you can have some experience you'll be able to participate in this no problem because i know exactly what projects to give to people so they can show their mastery if you want to get a leg up and don't want to wait to actually participate in that competition if you want to learn the skill properly you should apply for my mentorship program where I'm gonna actually show you everything. I'm gonna help you out with live calls, with interview prep calls. Everything's gonna be pretty much custom made for you. You'll be able to be part of the team project and whatnot. And you'll use that on your resume as experience rather than having a silly portfolio with projects that nobody cares about. And let's be honest, if you saw any of my portfolio reviews here on YouTube, you'll know how much people suck at building some decent projects. If you want to be part of the mentorship program, that's the first thing in the description. If you want to join, and you should join the free program so you can win the M2 MacBook Air, click on the second link in the description. We'll run a 28-day challenge, a competition. So I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.